Hello, and welcome to Life Lessons from a Total Failure, the podcast, a show that shares stories from passionate people living life on their own terms, and one that reminds us how life's failures and struggles are just the plot twists needed in our own personal stories to help us get to where we were meant to be. I'm your host, MJ Doherty. All right. Well, we have Vanessa here. Hi, Vanessa. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. <laughs> I'm super excited for you to tell everybody what you do because you're a badass. I, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> She's like, like well, how do I be modest? No, no. I am. I know I am. Yeah, she is. So, Vanessa actually is an actress, but you also are a stunt performer. Yes. And you've done, I mean, I've seen you pop up in lots of stuff. If, if you. Blink, you might miss me, but if you know where I am, you right. could see me, you know, sure. I mean, uh, I think I d saw you recently on a Geico commercial. Was it like a Geico commercial? No. There was some commercial. I did. I did. You, were, you had like braids in your hair or Oh, something? that that was, was the that? Uh, State Farm discount Sta double oops, check. Sorry. Ooh, oops, sorry. Oops, <laughs> sorry. Geico, branding, State branding. Farm. <laughs> see, I knew it was insurance. Oh, that was a while ago. That was with uh, Aaron Rodgers and Hans and Franz from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, That was yeah. really fun. That was fun. But, um, well, we're going to get in, uh, into all that. So, first, <laughs> why don't you um, tell everybody who you are and where you're from? Clearly, she's not a native Californian. <laughs> um but we don't make the mistake of saying we're in Australia from. No, we don't make no, that mistake. No, we don't. Because <laughs> I'm sure a, a lot of Americans tend to do that to... I, I forgive them. I forgive yeah. them over here. It's it's totally forgivable considering it's a much bigger country than little old New Zealand. Yeah, well, the first <laughs> time I did that, I was in Europe and I go, oh, what part of Australia from? And the guy said to me, I don't know, what part of Canada are you from? And That's, I was like, I always Snap. say that too. <laughs> right. I always just like when people say that, they're like, oh, 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 sorry. sorry when I yeah. say, I'm like, that's okay. I, you know, mistake yeah, you. All happens. you Canadians sound the same to me too. Uh, and they're always... <laughs> It's like, ooh. Like, All so right. So you're clearly from New Zealand. And go. Tell us about uh, you. My name's Vanessa Cater. I am from New Zealand. I'm a stunt woman and an actress. I moved here to L.A. about five and a half years ago now. Ooh, no. Yes. That's longer than that, right? No. Five and a half years. Wow. But, okay. But when I, I had come over here prior to that um that's when i first met you and i was here for about three months to just see to test the waters to test the waters and that's when i came to the maji Haber acting yes. class because we actually met, met in you. acting we classes did. it was a fun fun little class it lots was of awesome. very talented people god so talented yeah. it made me realize that i probably shouldn't move here because oh my god but i sat but there going i me. shouldn't be in this class i mean these people were like doing things and I'm like um how do I get put in this class I shouldn't uh, be here but you're amazing it was super fun so you uh are from Auckland right I am and yes. so was like little Vanessa always like I'm gonna be a superstar I'm gonna go to Hollywood is that <laughs> I'm, what you're I'm still trying to do that um it was always the dream I mean coming from New Zealand every now and again if I'm having a bad day um over here I for some reason it always happens I'll be driving in my car because I grew up watching Beverly Hills 90210 so I bought a convertible when I moved here because <laughs> obviously had to happen. and I'll be driving through Hollywood and California the song will come mm -hmm. on and I have to remind myself oh my god I'm I, I'm here I live here like I live here it's you know I'm I'm surviving which is a huge thing I found in LA if you can it's actually survive in LA you're doing pretty good um, and then I sort of smile and go, okay, nothing's that bad. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't have to be a superstar to be living my dream. I'm right. living my dream right now by just being here and actually pursuing it. So, yeah. you know, little five-year-old me that wanted to be an actor, I want to be an actor my whole life. Uh, that's the that entertainment industry is in my family. So, um, and now to be here doing it is Kind of it's amazing. Awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I tend to repeat the same things on this podcast a lot. Um, and I always say that it took me probably six or seven years to walk down the street in L.A. and look up at the palm trees or see the Hollywood sign and remind myself, oh, my God, I don't have to leave. I, I live here. Yeah. And you're not a tourist. You're not you're a not tourist. tourist. I think it's because if you come here and I didn't come here for the Hollywood stuff, but I've always I was obsessed with like. TV and what did movies. You come here for? Well, that's a long story, and that's actually what my whole book is about. It's like I 
I lost everything and I went bankrupt and I had a bar and it went south and it was terrible. And my husband was like, oh, we're moving to California because that's where he's from. Yeah. So we came here with nothing. And because I had nothing to lose and I couldn't get a job, my friend was like, you should do background because that's like temping in Southern California. And <laughs> oh, my God. That's the best description yeah, I've ever heard. It's, it's like you don't brilliant. go to a temp. You go to Central Casting. So I did. And I got booked to do Dexter my first day. Oh. And they tapped me on the back and asked me to audition for something. And I was like, I don't know how to audition. I'm just supposed to be background. And I got the part and I got my SAG card and the rest is history. Well done. Damn, that's, yeah. I can't compete with that story. That I should was just a, leave now. It, it was, a, well, it was a great story, but it was <laughs> meant to be. It was meant to be. Yeah. And so California was in my blood, even though I didn't know it. It was always meant yeah. to be. And it took me years to like let it sink in that I live here. Yeah. And it's a great feeling. So you knew you, you always had the dream to come here. Always. And so when you were in New Zealand, were you in theater? Were you doing, is there is there like a, is there, this is going to sound oh, so American. Is there like TV in like New Zealand? Like, do they actually have their own TV shows yeah, and stuff like that? Like, I know Home and Away and all, oh my but God, like, that's Australian. That's Australian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the might the Concords. I love that. Show. The Flight of the, the Flight Concords. Of Concords. Oh, I love yeah. That show. Which, which, again, though, that was an American show. Right. So, I mean, granted, it was about, a, you know, the two yeah. Kiwi boys and right. stuff, and their comedy started in New Zealand. Their whole show did. But, that was an American show. But did well. they have like, you know, um, Ireland has RTE and they do their own shows and they usually don't yeah. make it very internationally. We have TVNZ, but um, and we've got a few other TV networks uh, in New Zealand and they make content. And um, did some you ever of try to do that stuff when you were a kid? Were you like actively, yeah, I'm going to be an was, actor, or I were you just 14. like was in your head? I was oh, okay. 14 when I when I got my first um, my first agent and and stuff like that and i started doing featured extra work so i was very fortunate to go straight into being featured extra and my very first job they put me on a new zealand tv show which was called marlon bay and we had a this this wonderful actress in uh, new zealand called alona rogers she was older and gorgeous and fabulous um and uh yeah so i went and did extra work on that and my dad who was a stage hypnotist and a stand-up comedian that's his he's a what He's a stage hypnotist and a stand-up comedian. That is quite the combo. It is. All right. It's very, very cool. So, I mean, everything he does is comedy-based and performance-based. He went with me um, just to make sure that I, you know, would know the ropes and be professional and and not, you know, embarrass him because he's known in the industry. And probably treated well. He wanted (laughs) to make sure, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um but yeah, so I went and did that, and then the next job that I got was a American show being filmed in New Zealand, um, oh, High Tide. It was called High Tide, and it had George Seagal in it, and I was 14 years old, and they dressed me up, because I always looked older when I was younger, they dressed me up as some like poncy little LA executive. <laughs> Really? At 14? <laughs> At 14. Okay. And had me sitting like watching George Seagal play the banjo in this scene and I was just like okay well this is me I want to do this for right. the rest of this, my this life fits. this is yeah. what this is working and so I me. missed a lot of school over <laughs> those years because I wanted to be I decided I mean I always wanted to be an actor I'd always yeah. been performing and doing magic shows and and stuff like that professionally when I was five I started doing really? magic shows that's uh, that's something I did not know yeah, okay yeah, there all you right go. um and uh yeah so then my dad was like if you're serious about this and this is what you want to do then do, do it. it yeah so i was getting paid and and making money Amazing. when i just doing extra and featured extra work and some commercials and stuff and then i decided to take it more seriously and went to i uh got put up a year at school when i was younger um what, what does that mean put uh, up uh school. like i advanced a year okay. so okay. i skipped yep. a I skipped a year when i was younger and then that definitely caught up to me when I got a little older but I was 16 when I left high school okay. um, and I left to go to the performing arts in oh, New wow. Zealand so nice. I did an 18 month diploma in the performing arts um, and then from there <clears throat> I actually got the agent who I still have to this day in New Zealand and is my manager over here Wow! so it's been <clears throat> a long time talk um, about loyalty <laughs> yeah. alright uh, she's amazing Sharon Power shout out yeah um, <laughs> she's wonderful um, she very much inspired me to move here as well so it right. was great um, so yeah I, I um, you know got together with, with her as an agent and stuff but things got a little tougher at that point because how so um, my height and size is not a good thing in New Zealand. So New Zealand, um, as much as it's a beautiful, wonderful, 
um, forward thinking country in regards to so many things. Mm-hmm. When it comes to TV and film, we do we do a lot of American shows a shot in New right. Zealand. They cast a lot of New Zealand actors as local hires. Um, but when it comes to casting, they're forever trying to portray the the Hollywood image. And that in New Zealand means, you know, you're a size two and you're five foot six oh. and you're not my size 10 to 12. You're not five, five foot, foot 10 two. to right. six foot frame. <laughs> and so I walk into, I'd walk into castings and they would constantly say, oh, we forgot how tall you are, but I guess you might as well audition anyway. Ooh. I kind of crashed a lot yeah. in New Zealand with that. So, um, yeah, that's that, definitely that was a little tough. Rough. Yeah. To get that a lot. I mean, because they're not even judging your talent. No, they're they're just right off the bat being like, and that and I mean, I mean, casting wise, I do understand that, but it was also there were times that there were shows that I was auditioning for that there was no rhyme or reason. F- right, they they could have actually used someone who was taller and bigger and right stuff. I had a battle even getting on to Spartacus, which is a show <laughs> about you know people who are gladiators yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And uh, there was a point where someone said about me getting on the show, they were like, she might make some of the boys look a little smaller and we don't like that idea. And then the director, TJ Scott, who is one of my good friends now as well, he said, well, I want her for this just little stunt acting role. Um, And he was like, why can't she just be an Amazonian woman? Oh. on par with the men and they were like oh, oh yeah we could we could we could do that yeah so, huh. so, so it's th- just like oh i'm so going to america so. yeah. well, well we're glad you did but um it's interesting because you are i mean you're beautiful and you are <laughs> super fit and you um you're a knockout you just were at some uh, i think it was at the w you were at some event oh yeah yeah and absolutely. the pictures you posted SVs. you're absolutely stunning i love you so <laughs> how did that affect your frame of mind as a younger woman, when people keep constantly telling you, no, you're too tall, you're too big, did that screw you up? Um, or did you know that it was just... Well, I like to eat too much for it to be too much of an issue. <laughs> I just like if I have to choose between chocolate or no chocolate, I'm always picking chocolate. Yeah, so <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> um, I'm I'm pretty secure, so it's it, great. It, it's fine. It is one of those things, though, that it is it is a frustration, and I mean, I, I still encounter it here. I definitely do, but it's it, it's not so much in your face. Everyone's a lot more polite about it. Um, it casting wise, it is harder to be a um, like. It, I say bigger girl only in the sense that I know that there's full range of casting, but just with my height, my size, it is a very interesting kind of combo to be a sort of a muscular, curvy girl. Yeah. So I don't quite fit into a lot of categories. Like right. I'm, I'm a larger size, but I don't fit into the large size per right. se for, for casting wise. And then I'm definitely not the little... And See, I'm older, so I'm not the little Hollywood style. But it's kind funny because I so never, I would never once use the word large for you. Uh, I would say Hollywood she's tall, those, but Hollywood size. I am like it's it's one of those things that I technically as well I do large and just pre plus size modeling. Get out of I here! Know, it's it's because I fit that size clothes. Just because I'm fit and strong and in shape for my size doesn't oh, mean that I don't fit this clothing size. So yeah. Well, I think that you need to re reshape people's vocabulary on these things because I don't care how they know. use it as long as they book me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I I would never put you in the large category. I mean, I find that like fascinating, but. All right, so thank God you were a secure woman, and it didn't. Yeah, because a lot of people would crumble with that. I it, mean, I mean, it, it it's definitely tough. has had has had moments. There was like there was a um, a show in New Zealand, which I ended up getting on and working on uh, quite consistently. It was my very first stunt job, um, and that was a show called Legend of the Seeker. Um, I love that show oh, are really? you kidding me oh, oh my god i like, loved that show i love like bridget regan uh oh. we're still sort of friends you know more social media friends and stuff like that yeah. now to this day she's one of the most amazing oh women in the world i actually i, I remember that show used to come on really really late at night here and so it was like 
honestly, it was like one of those things that was on at one o'clock in the morning. So oh, really? people didn't really watch it over <laughs> here. But I saw it one day. It was like on and I watched and I was like, this is pretty good. It's like a Lord of the Ringsy kind of yeah. have feel or whatever. I liked it so much. I went out and like read the books. Oh, wow. Because it was so fascinating and so good. And I may have watched just because the lead guy was really hot. But I oh, mean, yeah. he was super hot. Yeah. But Craig, then I was like, Craig wow. I was like, this is so, that's so cool. I didn't know that. I just got really excited. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, uh, it was my first ever stunt. Well, t- I did a commercial. But the, my first TV show that was my first stunt job. And initially, the uh, Bridget stunt double, Dana, um, she has gone on to do, I mean, Dana is an amazing stunt woman. She was my stunt mentor and uh, she did, she doubled Charlie Theron for Mad Max and also really? for um, uh, Snow White and Huntsman. And she, I mean, she's got, a, she just finished on the second Wonder Woman, which I think awesome. she's done, she's That's so cool. Stunt acting so um which is but uh so yeah she was amazing and she was just like i really want we'd work together on the lion the witch in the wardrobe um the narnia chronicles which i was an actor on obsessed favorites (laughs) i was like the lead female centaur so i'm like shooting off bows and arrows are you kidding me yeah you're my favorite human ever okay i mean i saw that in the movie theater when it came out at like 1201 oh wow i don't have a lot of like die hard like fandom crap like i i mean i'm not that person I appreciate the people that are, and I actually love it because I think I would be if I wasn't, if I didn't, if I didn't try to be super cool, like when I was growing up, you know, if I wasn't so worried about what everybody thought, I would be that person. The only ones that ever leaked out for me really were like Chronicles of Narnia (laughs) and Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. I went to every 12 one screening of Harry Potter. See, well, I didn't go to any of the... I'm not that kind of a lineup, whatever, but I'm definitely like a Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Geek, 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 And I, lo- I just I'm saw... St- a, I saw Star I'm Wars for the first time when I was 18. My best friend is like... Did you say... You see my face just Yeah, I know. Like, I, wait, I, I know. My best friend, Nathan, is obsessed. Like, he was obsessed with Star Wars, and he <laughs> basically made me sit down and watch them all. And I, after I finished watching them, I was like... Why didn't, I ever, why didn't I ever see these? These are, They're so good. They're so good. And I, they stand up to this day. Oh, yeah. Like, I, the originals stand up the test of time. Like, they, they digitally remastered them, but to be honest, they didn't have to do a lot. I I mean, that's some they're great. phenomenal filmmaking. I just saw Star Trek The Next Generation for the first time, like, a year ago. <laughs> are you trying to catch up because of the and new I was show like, coming out? I was like, this is really good. It's really it good. It is really good. It's smart, and it's, it's Okay, good. so I'm going to tell you my, my little thing about, because people always say, what what sort of genre would you like to do? They always assume it's going to be action and stuff like that. My favorite genre um, growing up was always sci-fi. And the reason why is that the woman in sci-fi get to be smart, kick-ass, sexy, street smart. They get to be the whole kit and caboodle. They get to be everything. They get to be on par with the men. They get to be smart as well as banging hot. Um, And it's one of those things that, that made me love sci-fi is anytime I saw a character that I would want to play it came out of some sort of a sci-fi genre kind of even you know Ripley from Aliens with um, Scorny Weaver yeah. and things like that you know these women were savvy and smart as well as being kick-ass and sexy and, it- and I feel like sci-fi really paved the way for those kind of women before anything else even action films the girls might be a little bit kick-ass but they're you know they're a little sometimes a little Bimbo-ish. Yeah. You know, and things like that, unless you talk again, but I guess it sort of falls into the sci fi, which is the Sarah Connors and the, you know, stuff like that. So, well, and I think it's, isn't it funny that they're always, these are always shows set in the future? Yeah. And they're in the future, they are recognizing, and all people that are fans of them recognize that women are just as smart, completely equal capable yeah. blah 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 but we still have a hard time doing it in present time <laughs> right like, hello, wake up. <laughs> like, if we know this is the truth why do we have to wait for the future um you know i just want to say i don't like that i said fandom crap i'm going to take that back oh that was a that was one of those things i said out of my mouth because i it used to make me very uncomfortable because i knew it was something that i probably would love <laughs> but as a younger gay in the closet guy you were dealing from, with enough i was so scared like i <laughs> 
had to just, I, I didn't need anything else that would let me open to be picked on. So if you're listening and you are a fandom person, I, I really apologize. I didn't mean that. That's my issue, You not went yours. on to say that you liked Star Wars. I know, Everyone forgives I know. you. <laughs> okay, good. So anyway, I'm already geeked out because you were in Legend of the Seeker and Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> and so that's, so I was going to ask you how you got into stunts. But so basically, how did that happen? Well, this woman was like, you should do stunts, I'm going to help you? Or did you get cast, is it? Did you just one day go, oh, I, there's not a role that I like for an actress, so I'm going to go out for this stunt person? Not specifically, but kind of. Um, because <laughs> like, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was doing The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I was an actor, cast as an actor. Um, but I spent most of my time hanging out with the stunt performers because they're so much fun to hang out with. You know, they're a bunch of cool, kick-ass, super cool. dorky, fun people um, who have got, you know, no hang-ups and they're not prima donnas or pretentious or anything like that. To be honest, most actors these days aren't either. No. But, but The you ones know, that work aren't. <laughs> yes, you can't yes, be. Um, <laughs> um, so, but I was hanging out with all the stunt performers and, you know, we were all sitting around talking and they were saying uh, at one point they were like, wait, cause I they had a dance background um, and I was doing kickboxing and personal training and stuff like that. Um, they were like, why aren't you doing stunts? You'd be great at it. But they just finished having a conversation about all their broken bones and scars and stuff. And I was <laughs> like, hell no, not the face. Like, I'm you pretty. Me? I'm good. <laughs> I'm fine. And I just booked this movie and I'm going to be okay. Three years go by after that before. And I hadn't worked again. I was just wow. like, wow. I thought like, you know, granted it was a lot of filming mm -hmm. at the time on a huge American movie. I was really young. I thought that that was probably going to be my break into something more not I, I had no delusions of grandeur but i just figured that you get a credit like that yeah. you know you're how cool like, did you think I'm like you 18 were. or 19 down on the credit list in the centaur there are like That's only so four cool. of us so i was just like yeah and you know it was it was awesome i mean granted we were you know in the middle of but nowhere um right. in new zealand like staying in motels and 45 minute drives to sit on buses but and who cares but it, yeah it was, mean, it was the most incredible experience you must i got have felt to work like with the coolest I did. I got to work with like Howard Berger, who is one of the most amazing creature designers. He he works on everything. Him and Tammy Lane, um, you know, personally prostheticing my face and molding it, and you know, every day getting you know the stuff glued onto your face, which actually That's it's it's, it's it, you learn to. Uh, I, I've done a lot of prosthetic work since, so that's a whole nother thing. But um, I've done it too. Yeah, it, it is. If, it's an it's, experience. It's an experience, but I kind of love it because you can totally become a creature, right. which is kind of cool. Um, so this was my first experience doing that. So it was all amazing. So I thought that I was going to, you know, go on to, I was going to start booking more stuff. Right. No. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sean, <it's> wrong. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, Legend of the Seeker came around and they were filming Spartacus in New Zealand at the same time. And because it had been a long time since uh, Lord of the Rings and stuff had shot, a lot of the female stunt performers in New Zealand had gone on to, because there wasn't a lot of work for anyone in that period of time, um, had gone off to have babies, have gone on to do other jobs and stuff like that. And all of a sudden they had these, had this female driven kick our show like legend of the seeker and they just didn't have a lot of female stunt performers who could also act and things like right. that as well so they had this huge audition day um where they just found i think there was something like 100 or so girls applied they auditioned about 70 or so of us um and they took three of us Wow. So I felt like I proved myself it was <laughs> awesome well, clearly. um so dana my friend who i mentioned before she was the one who was like come to this audition i think it'd be great um and even at that time they were like you're awesome i don't know where we're gonna use you because of your size but we'll find somewhere which which was great, well, and, great. they yeah. recognize that you have something yeah they'll make it, it work it, yeah it was one of those things and people always say what do you specialize in i'm like jack of all trades master of none like i hit the ground hard because i'm a bigger girl so if you want someone to look like they're gonna hit the ground hard and as a girl 
I'm your girl. <laughs> it's like, I'm here. Yay. Um, so I've got, you know, basic skills and stuff. I can fight, but I'm more of a um, uh, sort of a street fighter style boxing rather than the, you know, s- defying gravity in the air kind yeah. of uh, martial artist type right. thing, which some of the girls are who are over here in America, they're Olympic gymnasts who are stunt performers and, you know, half the girls who do American Ninja Warrior and all of that. Whereas I'm kind of like, uh, my acting background is a, is a real bonus. Right. And I can literally pick a person up over my head. So, you know, there, you know, we've all got our Best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's how you got in. So you, you basically got into stunts because of Legend of the Seeker. I did. Yeah. And it was one of those things I hadn't worked and being on set is my favorite place to be. That's I mean, magical. Yeah, we all know. Like, it doesn't matter what level you're working at. When you're on set, and you know you're seeing the magic happening in the cameras and the lights, and you're with other it's like-minded exciting. people who are, who feel the same way that yeah. you do. It, nothing's faded over the twenty odd years that I've been doing this. That I, yeah. you know, I I love it so much. Um, that I just was just like, I just want to be on set working. So if doing stunts is going to get me on set, yeah, let's, let's it. give it a go. I, and I, turned out I was pretty good at it, and it's really fun. Yeah, I mean, and what more could you ask for? If, if you get to do do something that you really like and it's fun and it helps you to be in the environment you want to be in, then why not? I mean, yeah. I always say I would do background still if I if I could. I'm really like I was told I'm pretty much not allowed to. They're like you can't do background anymore. Like, like you can't like go and do background. Hey, like, if you're my kind rent of, can't be paid, but, I'm hitting right. The thing back is, it's like <laughs> I love doing background because I got to be on set. Yeah. I could watch everything and learn so much. It's like yeah. free education. You know, a lot of these people that do background, they go and they just sit there and get the free food and whatever, and they leave. And I'm always like, look around you. Like you are getting like a master class. Absolutely. Just like enjoy it. And I. I don't care what it was. I would go and do stuff for free just because I love to be on a set. Okay, well, you're a better person than I am because I want to get paid. But no, still, so I would, you know. I would, well, if I'm independently wealthy, <laughs> well, I'll do it for yeah. free, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, I think it's one of those things. I always say actors are the people, uh, some of the only people who will work for free because it's what we love. Like, we yeah. will go out and make our own content. We will, a friend's like, I've got a short film. Do you want to be in it? I'm like, hell yes, I do. Yeah. You know, that's the stuff. But if it was, you know, on set doing commercials and stuff, I still want to get Right. Well, yeah, because those, especially those commercials. Those <laughs> Those are good paydays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So you're now doing stunts yes. and it's taking off. Is that when you decided to make the switch and come over here? Um, I worked on, uh, I mean, ideally I came here as an actor, but let's be honest, I still work more as a stunt performer than an actor. It's it's still very hard to get auditions, especially in this current climate, being that I'm a white girl. Um, no one wants me um, <laughs> right it's, now. It's... it's, it's she's not joking no, it's, no, it's, it's, not. it's very hard right now yeah it, it is but but i you know i'm all I come from a country where diversity is just embedded in our nature so right. i was like all about all it about when it. i came i was yeah. just like yes hell yes i just didn't realize that meant i wasn't going to be working <gasps> um but it's fine no well, it, listen, it's, it's great it's you know what's great. worse is to be a white man oh yeah but luckily yeah. I'm gay. I know, so you've the white that whole straight other category. man oh. is screwed. <laughs> gay diversity. <laughs> I just go in and I go hi. And it's like ah. awesome. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, um, I digress. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, no, it just uh, I came over as an actor, but uh, again, you know, there's so many of us over here. It, it is a challenge. Um, whereas stunt work, again, th- there's a ton of stunt performers. It's just that um, that is a, a, a better market to be in and I've had more opportunity, which is fantastic. Um, I worked on uh, Spartacus, so I worked as a stunt performer, but I got this little, this tiny, tiny little stunt acting role, but it got a lot of notice for the couple of shots that I was in. And right. I worked with some amazing people, you know, Stephen DeKnight, who was the creator and showrunner and... Um, he recently directed Pacific Rim and now he's about to do a Netflix show, um, another sort of sci-fi amazing one that he's written and stuff as well. So he's gone on to do these really amazing things. TJ Scott, who is a director, who was the one who actually got me onto the show and um, the I became friends with one of the heads of stars as well, Karen, um, Karen Bailey. And that never hurts. N- n- no, 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 it doesn't. So when it, so basically, I had all these people in my corner, and that meant that I had the opportunity, and all of a sudden, the credits uh, to be able to apply for a visa, work visa, right. here in America. So that was my opportunity after Spartacus to go. You know what? 
I'm going to give this a go, you know, and the way that I always approached it was my life in New Zealand was never bad. I was very lucky to have, you know, supportive people around me and, you know, I worked enough and I was a a personal trainer and I was doing all that sort of stuff as well. So I had a, a job and a life there. And if, if I crashed and burned when I came over here, I could always go home. Yeah. I can always go home. There's nothing wrong with that. I have no qualms about if you know if if I do if I do crash and burn and I really don't make it and you know all that sort of stuff. At least I tried. Um, I was just talking about this in the last podcast. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, you're not gonna be harping on the fact that you didn't make it. Yeah, you'd be harping on the fact that you, you didn't really give it your all. Yeah, because that's Absolutely. that's the worst feeling. Oh God, yes. But so. You, you came over here and yes. you started doing stuff and, and you're and you're working and I see that you know I, I think I just saw that you are gonna be in the new Jumanji yeah that's awesome that was really cool uh, that's, that's gonna be cool. that's my that's definitely been the highlight so for you're me getting so far. I mean you're you're definitely growing as an actor and a stunt person and yeah. as a Los Angeles uh, <laughs> transplant and as a human right yeah but it wasn't I mean besides from the acting journey you've had other things in your life that have been hard and yes. I'm sure I mean you are a super positive person and <laughs> at least what we see what you put out there I don't know how you are when you lock yourself at, in at night you might, I sob in the yeah, bottom of my shower be, but like you <laughs> seem very positive and you put out really great energy and oh, really really you. happy and you've definitely had some major struggles that you had to deal with and you've had things that have really wrecked other people from being able to live their life in a full way Yeah, I think it comes down to making a choice of how you deal with it. And and again, that's not a criticism on anyone else. It's just a personal choice of how I decided to. And I'm I'm, are you talking about my mom? Yes. So I was going to say. So (laughs) you know, I know you lost your mom. Yeah. And you were uh, how old were you? you I was twelve. Twelve. So that's 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 rough. It it is. I it it, is when she died of breast cancer so that um has been a a thing for me for my my whole life it's uh she was a huge example to me it's been interesting as an adult talking to my dad more as I get older and stuff about some of the things some of the nature that she had uh as an adult and and the thing that I miss the most besides missing you know huge milestones that I could have you know had with her is my dad is one of my best friends and the thing that I really miss is not having my mother as a friend yeah as an adult um, so my choices that I made, um, from the time that I was very young from watching her being this savvy, gorgeous, um, spunky businesswoman and just energy and, you know, this light that she was to so many people, um, and to watch her pass away and that affect so many people was the choice that I made was to just try to grow up to be like her. Right. That, I mean, you know, people like, Lena, I just wanted to be like her. I just wanted to be like my mom, and, and you know that. What a tribute to your mom! I I, mean, I hope so. How how? Um, what a I, better way to honor your mother yeah. than to be like her and live the best way you would know she would want you to live? Yeah. But a yeah. lot of people don't can't see that, and I mean that's. Yeah, and I don't hard. know if you understand or you really because this is your life. I don't yeah. know if you recognize the fact that what you went through and losing your mom at such a young age that that can stop people for the rest of their life from growing and becoming the people that they're meant to be or what they want to do because it's so traumatic and it's so hard. So it's really, really amazing that you have been able to take this thing in your life that was so hard and really find the best way to spin it for you so you can honor your mother and remember her and still live this great life and be the best you you can be. There are definitely moments where, <laughs> like, some friends have been through some stuff with me where it, it, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I'm going to, like, I'll definitely spin it to be, like, all positive. Um, yeah, just because moments. it's, yeah, right, just, of you course. know, for the sake of the truth and, and this, right. the way this, you know, the way that you want this podcast to be. Truthfully, there have been real struggles in regards to that. But it, it's, it's so strange now being, like, uh, last year I turned the same age that she was when she died. Wow. So I'm now, this the anniversary of her death was 
two days ago and I'm just like this is the first time that I'm older than she was when she died she was so young when she died that's um and that's heavy it that is, is really heavy, heavy. Yeah. and it's just been this this thing that's weighed on me for so long so it's but I also have this I know I don't discount anyone who's gone through this for at any point in their life about how it feels or anything like that I and anyone who's lost someone when they were really young it is very traumatic and it is um it is one of those things that it plays on my mind constantly right it's a constant it's thing. always there but i also there are times that again that i tell myself i'm like not get over it it's just one of those things that i can't use that as an excuse not to live my life i right. can't like it's a very personal thing and i have friends who have been through stuff with me when it's just it's been something that for random reasons has hit me out of nowhere and i just burst into tears right and then i'm also like i'm a grown-up i'm crying over my mummy dying right. um and there are times where i'm just like okay you need to you need to stop because this is it, it's yeah so i'm not trying to discount anyone else who does that either it's just one of those things that i do have this thing of going it was a long time ago yeah. You've lived a whole life since then. I, you know, it definitely affects me and drives me and stuff like that. But I also really try not to use it as an excuse or as a... Um, a roadblock or like a yeah, wall. Yeah, but also just as a wah-wah kind yeah. of thing. I know that's... And I don't, and, and don't mean that to sound terrible. No, I, I don't know discount exactly anyone you're... else's... Right. How, whatever they go Whatever through. people have to feel, they have to feel. They do. But it's... what's nice is that if you can... If you can feel what you need to feel, but also be able to live your life yeah because a lot of people can't they become suffocated by trauma or drama they had yeah. in their life and they can't move on yeah and they don't they don't get to live their best lives as everybody loves so theory sad now and it's such and a it waste. is that and it's like really one of the things that one of the reasons i do with the stuff i do is so you know i was at that point once in my life where i the trauma and drama in my life paralyzed me yeah and i was just I didn't think I'd ever move on. And then I did and realized, okay. Thank God and, that doesn't define you. Yeah. Like you can't let stuff define you. And what I went through was looking back on hindsight was like really not that big a deal. But to me it was because yeah, perspective is amazing. Oh, yeah. And I just, I love when I see people that, you know, have kind of gotten some shit handed to them. Yeah. And you take that shit, put it in your pocket and you, you know, it's there, but you're not constantly have your hand in there. Yeah. Like you, you just kind of leave it there and you know, you remember it's there, but you just kind of leave it and keep going yeah and yeah. i think that's a really healthy way of being i you know tr try my best <laughs> well you're doing a good job oh, thank you so how does your dad feel about you living over here because he's probably really lonely for you yeah he, yeah like my dad is amazing he travels a lot he still performs he's really? yeah he still you know flits around the world doing these hypnotism shows and, that's so cool yeah no it's amazing making people laugh and and like he is he's such a huge um example to me yeah um at the same time he went through you know with my my mum passing it you know, it did paralyze him for a long time. Right. Um, and, you know, we went through financial struggles. We lost our house because of her dying. We, all of that sort of stuff. But again, he's that example who like, he pulled himself out of right. that. And then, you know, kept going and brought up two daughters and, you know, helped me strive to be the best that I can. And, and you know, is, is my biggest fan, which I love. Well. Um Cheers yeah. to him. What, yeah, a, good, what a good good dad. Good, he clearly did a good job. I'm such a daddy's girl now. Um, <laughs> um, but he's, yeah, he definitely, he definitely misses me. Um, and I miss him all the time. Uh, but, you know, he, he, until this past year, he would always come over to America. He would do all the high school graduations and all the lock-ins and stuff. He was there, oh, the lead fun. performer oh, throughout great. California. And, so he'd get and to come like, over and he'd, he'd spend get, some time with them. Yeah. And he'd get to do what he loves. Yeah. Yeah, now, so that's making the best yes. out of a uh, of something which could be a complicated situation yeah. that you live so far away. Yeah, um, but so now, sadly, I haven't seen him in like a year and a half, and I miss oh, him. No. So I need to go home. You're gonna so go home. I'm gonna. I need to go home. I didn't. I couldn't. <clears throat> I couldn't afford to go home for Christmas last year because oh. you know struggles and, yeah, and know, work and stuff like that. But um, I'm gonna take some of that Jumanji money. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're gonna not play me like things, Jumanji. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, and and make sure I get home at some point this year or for Christmas or something like did, that. Did you get to meet the Rock? 
I did. Um, mm. I, I, in is saying he as that, fabulous as everybody oh thinks he is? God, he is. He like touched my shoulder. And, and you were like, like, oh my God, hi, hi Rock. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but again, he's super professional. The scenes that we were in uh, together with us as stunt actors, there were a bunch, of, there were a crew of four of us who are the lead sort of stunt actor bad guy people, which I was one of. Um, we got to do a couple of different scenes, but there were also about 100 or so extras in there as well. <clears throat> and uh, the thing about a situation like that is that even though we're standing right next to him and could easily have a conversation, I, you know, I would have right. loved to have told him what an inspiration he is and all the wonderful stuff. But the minute you do that, it allows other people to do it right. as well. So you have to keep a very professional, professional. distance, which is, which is such tough. a shame. I know, it's so oh hard. There's those times that you're like looking at someone and, you're, and they're right there and you think, wow, you had such an impact on my life or you are my favorite. I just want to oh say, my God. but you know, you just can't because no, can't. it's just not what you do. And you're right. It, yeah. it then, then people, other people will pounce. And when these actors, I, you know, people say, oh, they're so overpaid and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, they make a lot of money, Ooh, yeah. but there's a couple things about that. Number one is it's a lot when you're, when you're driving a movie or a show, you're trying to remember all your lines and be in character and get everything done because if you don't do what you're supposed to do for the money that you're earning, everybody else around you is going to fall apart. Oh, yeah. So the the pressure is extremely high. So so I always try to remember that. So there's only been a couple times that I have talked to people that I was like really, like really wanted to meet. But I always like just let my my energy and my body language be open to them. And then if they say hello to me, or they start talking to me, then I got my in. Yes. And oh. it's always worked for oh, yeah. me, actually. So I'm, I'm going to have to take some examples. You know, it's that fat smiling oh. guy. Like, I just simple. They probably think I, they're, they're always like, oh, look at him. He's so simple. I'm like, hey. Oh, my God. That's a ploy. Oh, Such a ploy. Totally. <laughs> I'm so got it down. All right. So I have a question for you. And this is this. I don't know if you're going to understand what I'm asking. But so did watching Game of Thrones just piss you off? <laughs> No. Because you should have been on that show. There's, I, right? I get that all the time. Yeah, and then this prequel, like, is your agent getting you, uh, like, auditions? Like, Do you know how hard it is to get auditions? You do know how hard yeah, it is to get well, auditions. Like, uh, the, again, you know, sadly, my uh, my resume doesn't, uh, is a real struggle to try and get, you know, these lead role auditions. Because there are so many people who aren't working these days who have had you know, lead roles in shows over the years that they're getting the first ins. And once they've got, you know, a hundred people to audition, why would they look? Because. I know, because I'm there. Yeah, but things like Game of Thrones, and they want strong, striking women. You are a strong, striking woman. (laughs) And as I look at you right now with your red hair, (laughs) you could be like a Sansa relative from beforehand. (laughs) Like you could be like the whatever great 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 aunt or i don't know how far they're going back for this prequel but you could either. totally be a stark like you like seriously Sansa oh, wow. could be your child <laughs> in or, or, or descendant of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. so if anybody is listening from casting from hbo or game of thrones <laughs> or oh, whoever totally. does that over you know uh vanessa cater you can better at vanessa cater uh, at, uh. At Vanessa Cater, everything. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just look her up because she's perfect. I love okay. you. Um, I okay, guess... you, you. Do you need a job as an agent? No, no I'll, right? I'll it's it. like, hey, I'll listen, it. I am um, Erica, who helps me with the podcast sitting over there. She will tell you, I am the, I'm always putting people together. Everyone's advocate. I am the best, like, oh, have you met this one? And this one will be perfect for you. And you should go over there. It's kind of, I, I do that more for other people and get them more than I ever get myself because I'm it's always like, putting people together. You're just like, everyone else is great. Like, yeah, oh, great. forget about myself. Well, oh. no. So I never forget myself. But <laughs> what I've learned uh, in life and really in this world is the more you help the people around you, yeah, that's true. the more it comes back to mm-hmm. you. And you said uh, that, you know, how it's like to get aud- auditions. I've never been on an audition. Everything I've ever gotten is because I talked to someone, they remembered me, and they called me and asked me. So uh, I keep yeah. on, there are all these reasons why I want to just like walk out of this podcast. I'm like, I'm like, so, but th- wait, this is, what? Yeah, because I mean, I'm not like. You're lucky that you've got this podcast of yours just like, if you actually started it from your time in Hollywood, you wouldn't have a show. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's funny because. No, that's it's, amazing. That's, that's so why I'm, cool. I know I'm never going to be an actor that's going to get stuff from going to auditions with a bunch of people. Right, like I'm not like don't, that's never say not never. Gonna, you don't well, know yeah. because you haven't been. Right, on one. I mean that is a very good point. <laughs> but I assume in my head that it would be 
much more of a struggle. Where for me, I just kind of do my thing and I be me and I talk to people and I network and blah, blah, blah. And it works out for me. It's, that's it's, amazing, it's I though. Do. I mean, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I am super lucky. Trust me. I, I, so I am cool. well aware. And I know that people sometimes look at me and go, that's so cool. And some people are like, get out of my face. I hate you. you know oh, I mean? believe but, me. It's 50-50 right now but, for right. me. <laughs> but, all, but also, I'm not pursuing an acting career like you are. Because yeah. for me, I have other aspirations. And I, although I, I always say, like, I would love, you know, to... Oh, th- there, there is a TV show, a pilot written for this. The like really? lessons, Yeah. And... There's, you know, if, if that continues to go through and that that happens, I'll get to play me as me, which is freaking amazing. Like, That's I wouldn't say cool. no, it's... but is that my ultimate goal? No. Yeah. So my ultimate goal is to be me and to do this stuff and to go and talk to people. And, and I always say I want to be, I want to have my own talk show I want to be like Oprah and Ellen combined like oh, change the world and be fun be awesome. you know that's what I want to do because I just want to uh, for me the goal in my life is to be someone who has the platform to go and make sure other people in this world know that it doesn't have to be so hard and we can like I love that you know we can just like enjoy ourselves and be who we are oh stop being such a good love. person you make oh, me please. my, my a lot acting of stuff. aspirations just seem really pity well hey <laughs> you know, don't but don't get me wrong no. I also <laughs> love when like people are excited because I'm on TV and oh, yeah. It makes me so excited. Of so, course. you know, I have my, my vanity in, in certain ways, you know. Um, but, yeah, so I've, I've actually – so the, the, the auditioning thing is, is, is not something because it's not what I want right. for my life like you do. Like you you want to be that actress, yeah, I right? I really do. I, and I always say, like, you're, you're an artist. When people say, like, oh, I'm my craft and I'm natural and I'm an artist, I go, well, I'm, I'm not an artist. Like, I, I, I'm not – I'm a creative person. I'm a passionate person, but I'm more like, I'm just me. Like, I just do me. And I think, I think that you're missing the point that you inherently are an artist. Uh, well, just in itself. I'm, maybe, I'm, it's, maybe I'm getting there. I don't know. We'll see. But I, I look I at people it. like you and I see that passion and that drive. <laughs> and I and I love that. And I find it like so inspiring and so um, so cool because that passion, that drive that you're putting into this, it's showing dividends and you're reaping dividends and it's it's going to get you Slowly, to where you want to go. Yeah. Fingers but it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is like I, we living here see oh, yeah. a lot of people who have all of the right things to make them what they want to be. Yeah. But they usually don't have the drive or they might be a little lazy or they're yeah. waiting for other people to do stuff for them. I find that so frustrating. So it's, frustrating, it's, right? It's, oh, it's so hard so to see that. And and I have, I admittedly have friends who are like that. And it's one of those things where you're like, because they have had that growing up and they've had things handed right. to them. And you know that they're kind of like, oh my God, I work so hard. I'm like, you're like, no, you do you, do you? <laughs> like when people say to me, and this is no slam on anybody, I'm just talking about in this Gross in generalizations, this world. totally. Right. Yeah. When someone's like, oh, last week I binge watched five series on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, I haven't even been able to get through one season of a show I've wanted <laughs> to see it because I'm so busy. I'm hustling all the time because out here, if you're not hustling all the time, you're completely passed over. And yeah, you got and it. admittedly, I've had moments. I'm going to be honest. I've had moments where I've definitely been the person who's been binge watching I stuff. Binge and, I want to yeah, binge watch, but but you know that's that thing of and then you know you've got to check yourself, right? Because you know I, I there are times I'm like, oh my god, there's nothing happening for me. I'm like, well, why don't you get off your ass and do right. something about it? Because you know you can't in this industry. There are people who definitely get things handed to them and. Uh, for because they do have the whole package right. and you know they are prepared and they meet the opportunity and all comes together yeah. and all the sayings um, and they're very very fortunate very and that's right. wonderful but for most of us you need to be focused you need to hustle you need to work and so there are times that there have been nothing happening and honest I, ha- I have to be honest with myself there are times i'm like and you've got no one to blame but yourself yeah and because, I've, I've been there too i mean yeah. we go definitely goes in I was phases, like, when was the last time i contacted my agent and been like hey so what's up I'm like no okay i need to do that i email like in this past week i've emailed 80 stunt coordinators wow. with personalized emails going 
Hi. Hey, remember me? Or yeah, I'm not I, working I, right I, now. Would you like to? Me? Yeah, no. yeah, no, I'm, I'm amazing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just that thing of going, there are times that I haven't been doing that and like, and then there's no work. Oh, gee, I wonder why. Yeah. So, you know, get back into class, go do some training, go socialize with the right people. Because if, if it's what you yeah. want, You've, you got, why not? You yeah. might as well keep doing it. And What's, I what's sending to, a bunch of emails? What's I go to the gym anyway? What's the difference between going that and training with some other stunt performers? Going to acting class? Who I love. I, our acting class used to be like therapy for me. Oh, I loved that acting class. It was so good. It, the, the other <laughs> funny thing about acting class in LA is you just meet these like really inspiring, awesome people Hell for the yes. most part. I mean, if at a good school. Yeah, I've been to some like I got a Groupon. And I went to an acting <laughs> class once. Oh, God. Although I met one of my best friends there. I honestly, it was the most painful experience of my whole life. But when you go to a good class with yeah. people that are the same like minds, and I think this is how it is with anything you do in life. If you surround, if you surround yourself by the people mm-hmm. that have the same mentality and have the same passions, well, the, the echelon of people are a little bit higher. And, yeah. and you can connect with them better. And I mean, it's not like we're friends, but like I certainly would not not call you a friend. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. see you at all. <laughs> but if I saw you, I'd be like, oh, my God, what's going on? Yeah. And if I see any of those people that I was just saying, if I see any of the people that were in our class on the show. It's like been like six years. I still will take a picture and post it on my Facebook. Totally. Like, oh my god, I see my seat. I, I get I, so excited. I went to that class right up until Courtney, who is our our coach, yeah. uh, left. So I went there for like three years straight or something. Wow, like that. I know. I did yeah. not. It was uh, again but, but, much more dedicated than I am. <laughs> but, you know, again. Um, but it was one of those things where it was just uh, there are so many. I've seen so many of those people who have gone on to do stuff and I'm always like, oh my god I'm super proud I used to yeah, sit straight so across cool. from you reading lines there was great. a guy Daniel in our class who went on and he was on Once Upon a Time and I like oh, yes, freaked yeah, yeah. out and then our friend uh, Evan Evan was oh, on Vampire Diaries, Vampire Diaries Hawaii yeah. Five-0 yeah. I think he was like in Law and Order and every and time he's got I a see band him, like, and everything oh he's a well. band and oh yeah he's like he, I, I, I look at he's, Vanessa as well, he's the, one of those guys <laughs> I look at and go oh, please I'm like what is what do you have going on something's got to be bad because everything's just like perfect <laughs> yeah <laughs> you he's know? wonderful but yeah. it was great and like there's just it's just it was really fun and exciting it was a, a young girl named Allie who was like oh, yeah. Broadway singer and she's she like Little Mermaid something yeah she's like incredible so for me that was that was so fun, and I yeah. love that. So if I – unfortunately, they're very expensive, these classes. Yes. If I had all the money, I would just go because the people fascinate me. You know? It, it yeah. was just so fascinating to me. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. But – um and it's been fun and, and motivating for me because I get to keep in touch with people like you. Yeah. And I get to see same. what you're doing. And I, <laughs> and I get to see what you're doing and get to, like, see that you are such an example of if you want something bad enough – you can find a million excuses. Oh yeah, I have. I've had trauma in my life. I live in another continent. <laughs> I, in, but I can't get a visa. But you figured out how to do it, and you made it happen. I appreciate. That. So, Thank and you. that is one of those things I always say. Like, there's always like, no matter what, you always have two options: to accept things the way they are, or change them. Yeah, that goes with everything in life. People say, "Well, I can't because I have." this or have that well no you you always have an option you can always accept the way it is or change it and you obviously did not accept the way things were you were like okay i i'm not gonna be in new zealand and just do this i'm gonna go and do my thing and i'm gonna figure it out and you did yeah and a lot of people can't say that they so that is really cool and i i really think i really think we're gonna see you doing something very big soon I'm pretty Thank excited. You. I'm, <laughs> I, nice. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I hope so. We will see. We will see. I'm well, definitely... also the, just the last thing is the genre that you excel in is becoming the most popular and the most desired genre. It's it, in New Zealand. We call it swords and sandals, and swords we have so sandals. much of that in New Zealand. So I'm well, just like, no, I, I need to go home. <laughs> I mean, it's it's they're because of success of things like Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, they are. And what's that new one? Uh, there's a new one. I think it's like, oh God, it has one of the, <laughs> I know I work in Hollywood and stuff, but I'm so bad with people's <laughs> names. One of the Hemsworths in it. 
and oh. it's like a new Netflix show. Eric, you know what I'm talking about? Well, there's a new one. They said it's like Netflix Netflix's version of Game of Thrones, and it's this, and it's like already the hype is so big, and now like I know Amazon is looking to produce something like that. So there's yeah. like all this stuff. And, they, they're and, doing. They're going to be doing the Narnia. Um, really? I think Amazon or someone like that is doing. Like they're doing the Lord of the Rings one. They're doing, I saw that. They're doing. How yeah. do you feel about that? I think it's like way too soon to be redoing Lord of the Rings. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I actually just watched them again on a plane for the first time in in years, and I was on a mm-hmm. really long flight. Yeah, they are still fantastic. There's yeah. like I thought, well, maybe they're old in the CGI. Or no, I mean they're incredible. I, I they stand you, up. If you blink, you'll miss me, but I'm in there. Get out. Yeah, you are the coolest. <laughs> I'm so cool. All right. It was featured extra work, but it was really fun. I'm learning, oh, like I, I'm an annoying person who walks between um, Miranda Otto and and Viggo Mortensen at one point when she's walking towards him. There's this really tall blonde annoying girl, and that would be me. You know what's really funny? You could probably go to like Comic Cons and stuff and just be like, <laughs> I was a girl walk, and people like, would be pause. like, Can I touch you? <laughs> I mean, they have that. That is like. That is canon for people. You oh, know, it, was, it was amazing. I remember Viggo Monson. It was one of my only times where I... Ha- it, it, people with the X Factor. Like, it doesn't matter. There, there are people... Like, obviously, oh. people who are making it are like that. Right. But there was something there about is some- him that he just walked past. I was walking the other way to grab my bag, and he's like... He smiled and was just like, hey. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I never saw him like that until he looked me straight in the eye and said, hey. Um, and, and then he was just like, you coming? I'm like... Huh? It, Instead of, yes, I'm going to get my bag and I'll be right back for lunch. <laughs> it's Which, funny. It's true. You see celebrities all the time and, and you work with people and yeah. most of them you don't think twice about. But then there's those certain ones that they just have something different yeah. that they kind of stop you in your tracks. And you're like, oh, wow. This is this is what we've talked about with other – I've got other actor friends who are doing very, very well. And um, uh, they – you know, it's that thing that you see. We, we were discussing that – for whatever reason, you know that that person, when they walked into an audition room, it doesn't matter what they did. Someone's just like, we need to give that person a right. job. It doesn't, they don't necessarily even have to be the best actor. There's something about them that makes them a star. And sometimes it happens that they're so, there's something about them so much that they will rewrite or rechange the role that they were casting to fit that person. Yeah. Yeah. It has happened. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. Not to me. Me either. <clears throat> but it'll happen at some point. Don't <laughs> worry. We'll, 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 we're, we're on our way. We're, yeah. Totally. <laughs> All right. You are, I could go on and on and on, but we are at the 55 minute <laughs> oh mark. Oh my gosh. So we are a little over, Ooh. which is fine because I've enjoyed every minute of it. Me too. So uh, tell everybody. Exactly how do they find you? How do they follow you? How do they check in on you and watch your career bloom? Uh, Vanessa Cater, V-A-N-E-S-S-A-C-A-T-E-R, um, which is uh, Twitter, Instagram. Slash your and, handle and, at Vanessa Cater. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, cool. I kept it simple. It's yeah, that's good. Name. And yeah. it's great when you can actually get your name to be the handle. Yes. Really good. MJ Doherty was taken, so I'm N- MJ underscore Doherty, which I hate. <sighs> I know, so I know. Like, come on, I'm. I like to be the only MJ, uh-huh. except my whole life I've never been. I always think I'm the. I'm not only MJ, and they're like Michael Jackson, uh, M- Michael Jordan, uh, Magic Johnson. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a few. Only, there are you know, some tiny Mary Jane, examples. like yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, well, it was such a pleasure having you. So before Thank you go, you. I yes. have three questions. Okay. okay. Uh, first question: uh, tacos or sushi? Ooh, in New Zealand we do chicken sushi. What? I'm allergic to seafood, and that's my favorite. Chicken sushi. Yeah, I don't like even understand. Chicken. Instead of having like fish in there, you have really like smoked but like with rice stuff. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so, so but that you don't be... have that over here. But in New Zealand, that's my favorite. So you would pick chicken sushi. Yes. All right, you threw that was a curveball. All right, <laughs> um, dream vacation. Ooh. Oh, see again, I can't give you one straight answer. It's like tropical beach somewhere. Or like middle of a city that I've never seen before. I don't know. It, it's all right. Well, well, maybe we'll <clears throat> like one. Mind you, I did just recently see. Oh my god, who was it? It was like a Jonas brother or something like that. And they were in the Maldives. Oh, the Maldives. And, oh my god, that's I, so funny. What's what the person my last podcast said? Like okay. literally, the last one was like, I want to go to the Maldives. Oh, oh, did, yeah. But they just they saw this on Gorgeous. on the water hut thing. Um, what was on the water hut home thing, which obviously is bigger than like twelve of my apartments. Right. <laughs> um, and it had a water slide that went down into it. So I mean, oh, that please. and apparently it's like eleven thousand dollar a night 
kind of oh is that thing. all yeah oh, so i'm just like you know what we'll that's a, a dream vacation because i think dreaming's the only way i'm getting there no but, you'll yeah. get there you'll get there and okay the most important question is what's your favorite theme song i told him i'd rather talk about losing my virginity um <laughs> uh, i was just like i don't know but when you said that the very first one that came to mind was the greatest american hero oh it's a good one but it's been used and guess who this is so funny you know who said that was their favorite theme Who? song? The host of American Ninja Warrior. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, Matt Eisman. That oh, was his that's favorite. Interesting. So I, I have to get a unique one. So you have to give me another one. Okay. So I did say get three. Um, back up. What about the Muppet Show? Oh, that warms my heart. So I was thinking about it, and then I was just like, "It's." L- I mean, besides the fact that I just love the Muppets. I love the Muppets. It was also just because I always wanted to know what the two grumpy old guys were going to say. Oh, it's so great. In, right? in the middle of that, I, every time it was something different. I'm just like, who, who does it? I but, love the Muppet Show theme song so <laughs> much. Yeah. And I love the Muppets so much that when they when I found out that they were doing the Muppet movie, the new one, <laughs> I Jim Henson Studios is right on the corner. Oh. I wrote notes to Miss Pig, Dear Miss Piggy, Dear Kermit, and I, I threw them over the gate. At Jim Henson's oh my God, was so like adorable. every day for like two weeks. And I thought I was at least going to get like a letter like that was funny. Nothing. Radio silence. Thanks a lot, Henson Company. <laughs> because but I you're mean. adorable. I know. It's like, dear Peggy. Fiber? I know. I think they did. Okay. I think that. Yeah. Which I think they thought it was. Like, they reply. <laughs> I know. God. Anyway. All right. Muppet Show is a great one. So I will. We will leave you with that. Oh, and thank you so much for coming. It was so thank wonderful you so seeing you and having, having you. Me. Yay. It's good to see you. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And if you enjoyed our podcast today, make sure to hit subscribe and rate, review us, and follow along on social media at LLTF the podcast. I absolutely love getting to this podcast. It is so much fun and want to be able to continue doing it for a long time to come. But it takes a lot of time and money, and that's where you come in. If you think you'd like to donate, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash LLTF the podcast, or you can donate via Venmo at LLTF the podcast. That's the Muppet Show! It's time to play the music! It's time to light the light! It's time to meet the Muppet on the Muppet Show tonight! It's time to put on makeup! It's time to dress up right! It's time to raise the curtain on the Muppet Show tonight! Why do we always come here? I guess we'll never know! It's like a kind of torture to have to watch the show! It's time to get things started on the most sensational, inspirational, celebrational